Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's webinar looking at security and, um, and how that enables community living. Thank you so much to everybody that's attending this morning and those of you that are logging in. Um, my name is Louise Martin and I'm from Estate Living. So before we get going, uh, just a quick little bit of uh, housekeeping. Um, we, as you, I'm sure by now, everybody has been on a, a Zoom webinar and we, and probably uh, this is this is well known, but just in case, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see there is a little box that says chat. Um, that creates a chat room and we use that to um, ask questions. You can ask questions to the panelists. We have a, a our panel of experts that you can see on your screen and then behind the scenes they've brought on their teams to uh, handle any questions that you might have so please feel free to share um, those questions with us there is also a q a uh, button there as well which you can use for questions um, this session is going to be recorded and we will share that recording uh, with you through um, estate living's communication um, in the weeks coming so without further ado, uh, oh, you know, I forgot something, I'm so sorry. We're also running polls throughout the webinar today. And um, what this means, a poll question will come up and it will give you a multiple choice answer. As you can see, there's one on your screen now. And then if you can choose an answer that's most suited for you, we'd appreciate your participation and we share the results of the polls as well um, towards the end of the, of the morning. So just a little bit of a run through. Um, we have a wonderful uh, team here today with us. Um, we are looking at security and how that enables um, community living. We're also looking at what that does for property prices, what are investors looking for, and what are the types of solutions that are available in the market now that can drive um, community spaces and the growth within that sector. There is no better example of a successful um, security community uh, and greater municipal relationship than that of the Dane Fern Community Association. And we're very pleased today to have David Bayes from Dane Fern um, talking about this association. It's been around for a few years and whenever we get the opportunity to uh, have a discussion about it, we really do try to grab it. We feel that it is an incredible opportunity um, and, and, and something really valuable for all residential community managers and developers to learn from. So thank you so much, David, and happy birthday to you. We know that you are uh, putting this time aside for us and we really appreciate it. Um, with us as well on the panel today is Aton Ash. He's representing Boomercam. They are doing some amazing work within both public and now private spaces. And, and we're very grateful to almost be soft launching their private space product today and bringing that through to you. Um, Rian Bellington, who will be joining us a little bit later, um, he is coming to you as looking about risk assessment, looking at data and the protection of data. Um, and uh, and uh, unfortunately is having a few technical issues, which is slightly humorous, a bit ironic maybe, um, but he will be with you shortly. And then of course, very important uh, today is how technology is driving these um, community security and lifestyle that uh, communities offer. And that of course is going to be um, shared with us with Alan Cowley, who's coming through to you from Go City. So thank you so much to everyone on the panel and thank you to all the attendees. Um, without further ado, let us uh, move forward. And David, if you could tell us about the fantastic work that you've been doing with the Dane Fern Community Association. Thanks, Louise. Uh, morning, everyone. Um, thanks for the opportunity to present uh, on this uh, important topic. And, uh, you know, when the uh, association first started, it started probably about 30 years ago with the development of Dane Fern. They had some council issues with road reserves and stuff that they needed to manage and setting up the Broadacres Drive association as it was known back then um, just helped them facilitate that with the number of the other you know properties and that that were in the area 
Obviously, that was 30 years ago, substantially developed from then. And uh, when I joined the area as the, the GM for Dane Fern Valley, much smaller estate next to, to Dane Fern Golf Estate, the, uh, the, the residents kept coming to us with, with issues, taxis, um, crime and grime, uh, you know, issues in the area. And me being on my own, basically in the area, I didn't really know where to go. So started getting involved, got the, the Broad Acres Drive Association reignited. We, we approached all the other estates within the area, substantially more developed now. And uh, so can we just move next slide on? So what we currently represent, it is uh, 13 residential estates, businesses, over 3,000 homes, about 15,000 residents, uh, not excluding their staff of about uh, 6,000 individuals that move up and down and in the area every day. We've got the school, the Danefern College with 1,200 students that traverse the area every day. There's two shopping centers that our residents use, an office park and a storage facility that all um, makes use of, of Broad Acres Drive. Can we move on to the next slide? So that's pretty much the footprint that the Broad Acres Drive Association, or now known as the Danefern Community Association, looks after and covers and, and represents. Can we move on to the next slide? So what we're protecting, we're looking after about 1.4 kilometers of road. That's a broad acres drive. It's patrolled 24 hours a day with two vehicles, armed guards, um, 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. We clean and maintain the road. We repair the potholes. We repaint the road markings. We clean and maintain all the verges uh, with a service provider, all the estates and, and and shopping centers that, that butt onto the, the reserve, they all maintain their own gardens, you know, so you look and feel your, your first approach into Broad Acres Drive. It's just, it's a beautiful, clean environment. Uh, we report on the street lights. We maintain a great relationship with, with Jovic City Power, with, with the municipalities in order to maintain all of this and to get quick reactions to any issues that, that might come up, you know, traffic lights being out, etc. Uh, we'll keep the road free of taxis so there's no loitering, there's no crime and grime that develops out of those kinds of uh, situations. And Uber parking off on, on the sides of roads that's become a, a problem in a number of, of communities. Um, we manage to keep them out. Uh, we don't allow any advertising on the road other than obviously council approved and work very closely with the council, you know, because we all get very tired of of stickers and, and all these posters that get put up all of these places and start to make our areas really look tatty. Uh, and we obviously interact with city and provincial council because uh, the William Nickel is a provincial road. And one of the biggest um, projects that we undertook as the Broad Acres Drive Association back then was helping widen the William Nickel uh, uh, road, which has now become a six lane road. At the time, a developer was was made responsible for, for widening the road and they were re requested by provincial roads to only do two lanes. And as an association, we all got together and we lobbied against it and managed to get them, get provincial roads to turn it into a, a six lane road, which ultimately increases property values because now it's easy to get in and out of the area from traffic flow. And it's one of the main arterial routes into four ways with a tremendous amount of traffic and, and pedestrians coming from from the din, from Deep Slurt and that in order to get to work every morning. So a great achievement for the association, one of our, our proudest moments. Can you go to the next slide, please? So there's an aerial shot of the road that we're looking after. You'll see there at the intersection where our reaction stands off, the, the two reaction vehicles. Uh, we've got an ambulance service, SLA paramedics that also stands off there when they're free. 
At that point, we've also got uh, number plate recognition cameras, and that sends obviously automatic alerts to the patrol vehicles and to our security teams should a vehicle enter the area. So we've become a lot more proactive in terms of managing crime, managing what happens in our area. Big problem with a lot of estates is follow me homes or you know from airports, etc., where at this point we can manage to get a good idea of who's coming into our area if there are any you know suspect vehicles suspect number plates our teams onto it really quickly and we're more proactive in terms of of the crime can we move next slide please thanks julia so we've chosen our partners very carefully as a community and uh fidelity i'm not trying to advertise for them but obviously one of the biggest role players in security and they bring a tremendous amount of support to the table. And that's what we've gone from. We've looked at the caliber of residents that we're all looking after in this massive environment. And we've said, how can we best serve them? You've got ambassadors, you've got captains of industry, you've got your average Joe, and we need to have security, fire, paramedics, all of that at the touch of a, a button in order to look after our, our community. We can move next slide, please. So what we've created within Dainfern itself um, in our estate app, we've got an SOS button, a panic button, a medical assist button, and the one will bring security. Obviously the one will bring the paramedics that we've aligned ourselves with. They're on site 24 seven as well. And an instant reaction, an instant pin drop or location should the resident be on the golf course. And we've now taken it a step further and we've gone a 5k radius outside of the estate. So that should, for example, residents have had flat tires where we could send our security and maintenance to go and help them with flat tires, uh, accidents, etc. And just at the tap of a button, they've got instant reaction and instant service and we can look after them and their families. Again, one of our other partners, Halo Aviation. Um, I've had the fortunate uh, or unfortunate uh, lift in the back of that uh, helicopter. And again, numerous times the helicopter has been called in to airlift residents, you know, two hospitals. Within four or five minutes, you've got a, a helicopter landing and taking out a resident and, and saving lives. Move next slide, please. Again, with Fidelity and, and the interaction that they bring, we've got uh, dedicated crime prevention over a vast area. And another area that we've moved on to now is, and has become very important for a lot of our, our, our estates around the country, is, is civil unrest. So we've developed a civil unrest plan with, with Fidelity, and we actually had to make use of it the other day, where the helicopter and all the teams were called in when uh, there were quite a bit of strikes resulting from ESCOM cutoffs in, in the informal settlements and just it just really gives us an incredible amount of of uh, comfort knowing that we've got support like this in and around for for our group of communities next slide please again our halo, halo aviation as mentioned with our dedicated air support next slide please one other area that we found seriously lacking within our municipality is is any response to fire. Uh, we had small uh, security vehicles fitted with with a bit of uh, firefighting equipment, and it just wasn't enough. So we've partnered with a, a group called Fire Ops, a, a bunch of retired firemen and youngsters that are are trained. So again, we've now got security, we've got fire reaction, and we've got paramedics uh, on site within minutes. They're at any house, any fire situation, any dangerous accident. These guys are on site. Next slide, please. We've introduced smaller fire tactical vehicles that can get into a lot of the little areas within the states. A number of the states have very small roads or, 
small traffic circles that your bigger fire engines can't get access to. So with fire ops, they've developed these smaller tactical vehicles that can get quickly to a house fire and assist, you know, before it becomes an emergency. Next slide, please. And there's pretty much our, our entire team that, that we've associated ourselves with and that we've brought on board. All trained professionals, we, you know, we haven't brought individuals without experience. This whole team comes with years and years of experience in their in their relative fields. And again, brings instant crime, health services, fire to our residents that uh, that need it when they need it. Thank you, next slide. In our community, we also interact with all the other security service providers. We've got Thompson's, we've got Night Guard. And again, just on mass, we can respond to, to any, any and all emergencies. Next slide, please. As I said earlier, we work incredibly hard with all our municipal partners, with SAPS, um, I sit as the, the vice chair of the Sector 3 Community Policing Forum. And again, it gives us instant reactions and instant contact with JMPD, with SAPS. So any and all emergencies are dealt with at a very high level. Next slide, please. And that's pretty much it. Again, just how we've seen the association grow over the last few years and the results that it's brought to our community and the comfort. So residents leaving their estates all of a sudden are on guard because they've left their, their comfort zone, they've left their secure environments. Whereas us as the Danefern Community Association, we're saying, as soon as you turn into the area, you're safe. There's no crime, there's no grime, and we're there to look after you. And uh, it's turned out to be a great success for our community. Thanks, Louise. Thanks, thanks, David. Thank you very much. Um, I just before we move on, I, I think this is an incredibly interesting project. And uh, just a question: so, you know, as as you looked at that first slide, you've got thirteen different communities that make up the association. Am I assuming correctly by saying that each one of those communities have their own internal um, service providers when it comes to the say security offering? So how, um, as a founding member of the association, did you get all of these communities and all of their service providers to work together in a space that, that you didn't have any sort of digital, at that point, there wasn't a digital advantage of you know, everyone plugging into an app mm. or into an armed response. What was your approach there? Absolutely, and then one of the the toughest things was to get the various security companies to talk together. You know, everyone has got their own security provider and, you know, security the guys don't typically like talking to each other because then, you know, it's, it's competition out there for them. And uh, just over time, as we've managed various incidences and as we've done it as a group, um, we, we've just seen such success and we're now meeting on a monthly basis with the board with all the security providers and we just share information and, and that's how we started with our monthly meetings and from there developed to radio contact and then obviously whatsapp developed and now the guys are sitting with smart devices in, in their reaction vehicles so just out of necessity and, and, and as crime developed in the area and all around the country you know we've just become more and more responsive to each other and we realize you know, it's holding each other's hands in the community. We can't do it without each other. And that's what everybody's realized. And it's just become successful from that perspective. Um, Dave, do you think that this type of model would be able to run in other areas? You know, if you look at the Northwest province, they all say similar to you in the way that they've got a number of states in quite close proximity. Yeah. Down south in Joburg, even in the Western Cape, um, uh, the garden route do you are you being approached by other precincts and uh, and asked uh, you know to share your expertise yeah we certainly we have been approached many many times over the years and yes most certainly can work in a number of environments and uh, 
for us now as an association, we've branched out further and we've gone now to four ways with the, the future city four ways um, initiative where we've done exactly the same thing. So it's just developed from there and the models grow. And so even though you don't feed off the same street or the same entrance, as a community getting together, Lone Hill's done it very successfully. You know, now we're getting partners as far as, as you know, Four Ways Gardens. You know, similarly, they want to um, join us, see the lakes, you know, and they don't feed off the same road. But at least from a response side, they need the fire response. They need the medical response. They need the security presence. So absolutely. But it takes time to develop the relationships. And again, money, you know, so each one of these residential communities has to contribute to small amounts of to pay for security and stuff. But uh, that's, you've just got to start small as we did. Get a project, cleaning project, uh, fixing your potholes and, and develop from there is, is all I can recommend. Absolutely. And I, I, I think perhaps I understand the concept of the critical mass. The more contributors you have, the more services you can offer. And hence, you know, having the retail and commercial involvement, the school involved, adds a lot of value to this program. Um, I, you know, one could also sort of make the assumption that when you launch the development, launch the community association, the technologies weren't necessarily there. And I, and I think that what you've achieved is incredible but now with bringing in technology as a to assist as a driver and also to reduce those costs slightly um if it does to a certain extent um i suppose your, your costs also come in from your services um do you think that if you look at our panel that we've invited today offering the solutions that they do that that had you had these solutions available to you at the time that that could have sped up the process or made the process simpler what what would your feelings oh, be on that absolutely um Vuma camp for for example we've been talking to them for many years and what they've managed to achieve uh we would like to roll out Vuma Cam within our estate, you know, because as we've all got fiber within our estates. Why not latch on to a successful service provider like that with the technology already in place, with the control rooms, with all the infrastructure? You know, why should estates be doing that themselves? Rather get a professional, a group of experts, you know, to assist you doing that. And that technology brings a tremendous amount of value in, in you know, in reducing crime in your areas. And, and helping you to react to that kind of stuff. So most certainly technology is a huge driver in, in the industry. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned fiber. Absolutely, you know, fiber is the backbone to what we're doing when it comes to communication. Thank you so much, Dave. I'm, I'm, we're gonna, and, and thank you for, uh, for being with us and especially with your birthday today. I'm sure there'll be Absolute some more pleasure. questions coming up as we go along. But now that we've mentioned Boomercam, I think let's let's bring in Aton. Um, Aton, uh, you know, this is a, you know, we've just uh, you've heard now about the, um, about the association and what they're doing. And I'm sure that your new private spaces project could bring so much um, to this type of association in at Danfern, but also across the country. Can I hand over the reins to you and you could tell us a little bit more about it? Thank you very much. So there's absolutely, first of all, to Louise, to David um, and to everybody, thank you so much for this incredible opportunity. And the truth is, you correctly are 100%. Vumacam actually, our original history is actually as a security company in the northern suburbs. We had our own little private, you know, all our areas and cameras out there. And exactly what David was talking about right now is the issues we faced as a security company. We had an extensive camera network. On that network, we had, whenever a car came into our area, we had a view of it. As soon as it left our area, we didn't have a view of it anymore. And the issue is, criminals, as we know, come to vast, vast, vast majority of their crime scenes in vehicles. And the honest truth is, at the same time, we were as good as our network being up and available, but we had no view out of our own little bubble. And as again, as David mentioned quite clearly before, all the competitors never spoke to each other. We were our own little silo. We have an area right next door to us, a crossroad, we have its own silo and every homeowners association, every area out there would create its own little camera network with absolutely no connection to each other. And if it was impossible to understand a proper intelligence, 
And as we moved on and fiber became available, we understand this amazing ability to marry infrastructure and technology to manpower on the ground. And that was a birth of our Boomercam network, the idea of becoming pretty much an integrated platform that every single service provider on our platform can connect to each other, share information, share intelligence, work with each other as opposed to compete while still having a competitive edge on the ground. And therefore this incredible, robust, expansive, actually quite incredible rollout of in city of Joburg alone, we're looking to get up to seven and a half thousand cameras. We're doing a Kuraleni, Mokhali, Durban, um, Chwane, Cape Town, so on and so forth, keep rolling out. Next slide, please. And therefore, as this concept kept rolling out out of there, we understood this necessity of being able to take public space silos and turn them into a single structure alone. So as it stands, our current status alone is we're getting approximately just over 2,000 license plate hits per minute on our network. Our current uptime is 98.43%. We have just over 2,700 poles planted with 3,000 cameras on it across 48 clients. And so we've taken this incredible, robust public space network and we've understood that we can create proper intelligence for people and for companies. And, for, and now we're going to see two states We've been able to connect all these issues, and David mentioned so many of them. The idea of follow me homes, the idea of integration, the idea of multiple service providers coming together. We decided we'll become a platform network of CCTV intelligence and be able to assist everybody out there at the same time. Next camera, please. And the real structure and our real intelligence came from is a software we built out there called Proof. So I'm going to talk you through three short videos of exactly how the network of license plate recognition works. All our poles are made up of two different types of cameras. We have license plate recognition, we've got overview cameras. They're two, two totally different jobs, but they work fully integrated into each other. So the first structure is you have a control room, which has cameras fed into that control room. And the idea is alert based. We do not want people watching screens. You cannot watch a screen. You will fall asleep unless you're my child. You can watch a computer game, start on a Monday, finish on a Wednesday, maybe eat in between somewhere along the line. But why is that? Because they're active. They're not watching, they're active. We have got to come with the concept. You can turn a control room into an active, and I don't use the word computer game, but an active technology driven place where your controllers are actively working with alerts. You've got the ability to achieve any goal you want. Next slide, please. And this is what a control room looks like. You sit in your control room and the next night you hear an alert come through. You can just play that. That alert pops through and with that, a car pops up of a license plate recognition of, of a license plate. That we only alert against license plates that are on vehicle of interest lists. We, 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 we interrogate multiple lists. First we do is we check, is that license plate, what we've read, the same license plate that is on the list. You do not want to be going after the wrong vehicles. We check it out, we work out where did the list come from, who was in it, what is the case number, what is the region, do we send people after the car, do we not send people after the car. There's an alert. At that point we decide it is the correct car, it is a wrong car, we can remove the plate, we can transform the, to decide what to do with it. And all these different options are in front of the controller at the time. All this intelligence, by the way, is shared across all the different people. So any alert that comes through, this could be an alert from a company A, when that car comes to company B's area, this alert will come through. They load it themselves, hijack into place at three o'clock this afternoon, they load it, that car goes from the West End to Santon, as it hits Santon or to Dame Fernie State, They'll get alerted across a crime that just took place of a vehicle that took, just took place in another area. Next slide, please. And that is worked on the exact alert structure. The problem is that it's not only about alerts. You want intelligence at the same time. As I mentioned, we've got over 3,000 polls out there at the moment. So what we have the ability, we can play the video, please. We've got the ability now to search across our entire network. So you know for a fact that this license plate was involved in a crime now. Came to my area and did something wrong. You cannot search against that plate. You have to at each time accept terms and conditions. You ask why you're doing it. We are very, very, very poppy sensitive and compliant. And we need to make sure that people aren't using this powerful technology 
to obviously search if they aren't allowed. But at that plate, you search it, the car comes up. We work out every single time this car has hit our system. Where was it? When was it? Is it the same car? Is it a different car? More importantly, is it the correct plate? We know, we've got a view of that car. Did they have a, do they have a new scratch in it? Has the disc moved places? And all those notes get put into the system of a shared intelligence on a single platform for everybody to once and for all work together. So not only do you get alert base, you've got an intelligent base of searching of where have cars been, where's the intelligence, create sting operations you need to for this within the security world to be able to actually once and for all take crime off the street. Next video, please. Whatever the, the next issue we always found was, we don't always know a license plate. We often know where a crime takes place. On this corner at this time, this red car was involved or this silver fortune was involved in a crime. We have the ability to search across the cameras themselves as well. Please play. So what will happen is you'll have the ability to know that in this intersection at this time, we know that there was an event. We know it was a silver car. Let's find the date. Let's find the time. Let's now search that system through to see what exactly took place and how it worked and how it didn't work. And at that point, you search it in, you choose your time, you choose your date, you run it through the system and every vehicle that passes those poles and those cameras at that time get brought in. You have the choice to either choose it by actual camera itself, or you can go into a map of all our camera poles, choose exactly the area, you choose a camera. We have two cameras on this pole. I want camera one. We know we drive in a southerly direction. Let's actually choose this one at the same time. Let's work out a bit of a breadcrumb where this vehicle has gone. Enter that into the system and see exactly what took place and with what car it was. Now we get a list of every, once again, from a poppy point of view, why am I searching? Who am I searching? What's the reason? A person, everyone in the control must have their ID into the system we know exact not which control room search which person search and now you find the vehicles that went through hang on now it's not this car hang on it's a different car let's see yes that is my vehicle let me now take that license plate put it into my search story and see is that the vehicle yes put it on to load it onto the system anywhere that car goes now you'll be alerted as it hits every camera no matter who's monitoring those cameras different security companies competitors now work together on a single platform to once and for all deal with crime within the area. Please let me take me to the next slide. What is important, that's the overview world. At the same time, that was the license plate recognition. We now got overview cameras. Again, you can't watch cameras. We need to put software on our overview cameras to pick up any anom anomalies that take place. So here's a story which took place in Rosebank. You can play the video. So again, this is a, a, a huge issue around everywhere, snatch and grab. We see the guy, this is black screen technology, we get alerted, can't stop the crime. But I do know we've got a white Toyota now. Drives past a corner, pick up that license plate, put it into the search, put it onto the alert. And once again, the overview cameras now become through an alerted incident over an overview camera, and once again, can now alert everybody, anybody on our system, of exactly what's going on and how it's going on. And this was a very robust rollout for the public space. Why am I thinking in public space and a private space? Because we understood the issue in public space was multiple different silos not working together and we created a platform for that to work together. We've understood to take that exact platform and put it into the private space model at the same time. And that's where we are now. Next slide, please. So what we've done now is we go into the, the, the we've done the exact same things so in a shopping mall, for example. You can we'll keep rolling through this as I talk. So you'll have an array of different cameras. You have a camera at a guard hut, you have cameras in the public space of the mall itself. You're constantly having even more cameras. Every every little shop has its own camera. You then got cameras at the front gate, which is license plate recognition cameras. You have cameras of our public space around. And these often are different companies, different control rooms, absolutely no integration. We've taken our platform and tied all of this intelligence into a single platform for once and for all, private space can go into Proof360 piece that we've created in the cloud and work 100% with public space. Public space within the private space gets pulled in. And even more than that, you can continue doing this into these states. Next slide, please. 
So as David was saying so amazingly before that all the issues you have in an estate, problem number one, you have garbage issues. You have loitering. You've got each homeowner has its own structure. You've got an array of different things going on. And then you have all these multiple estates working together. We have realized we can pull this all together into one place at one time on our platform. So you take the cameras from the control room, we bring it into a, a control room. So cameras from the, from the front gate. We bring each home's alerts within any state you can bring to the same control room. We work with an incredible software called Sentient, which helps that at the same time. You bring the state cameras into the control room. You bring the, the, the public space cameras of our poles around these states and around the entire area into the same control room, bring the perimeter cameras in, you bring the last plate recognition cameras in, and now what you've got is a single integrated software platform sitting at a single control room with a controller, and all he's seeing is alerts. The alerts from all the different triggers get pulled into a single place, a single screen. Not only are you tied into a public space network, we take your entire, every little nodule, and modules in the private space itself, from the private home to the public space within the state, to the perimeter of that state, into a single platform where you've got a total view of exactly what's going on in your control room. Talk about follow homes, our, our, our future stuff that's coming up now. If you've got these ideas where you're able to, able to tell a, a client of yours, or a control could say, we've noticed that you've been the same license plates have been behind you for a period of 15, 20 cameras an alert to you might be followed. Please turn left, please turn right. Cloned plates. You have an ability of technology to pick up that you're able to find in two separate places. If a plate is in Pretoria and a plate is in Dainfinet within 10 minutes apart, unless they're in a helicopter, they ain't going to get the speed. One must be cloned. So it's not only about the idea of this watching you story, it's an integrated structure of private into public to be able to create an overall over over encompassing structure to create absolute total success stories out there. I'm not going to go through all the success, success stories. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. You can go to the next slide. Of some of them, you'll notice each one is a different company out there. And if you go into the details of these different stories, you'll notice there are multiple companies per story. Company A would have loaded it. Company B would have responded. Company three would have seen the alert. And on a single platform, able to work together in a public private relationship from the smallest camera in a private home all the way to a public space network please go out across the entire country so that's a very quick rundown of a very <laughs> big expansive robust rollout from the boomer camp point of view thank you so much that was thank you that was a quick rundown of a very exp expansive offering i just want to can I just ask you a quick question just before we, we move on? So I just want to understand, you know, if we look at the Dame Fern Community Association as an example, it's made up of 13 different entities. Each, each one of those entities, each one of those estates, for example, have a are at a different lifespan. So some have been around for 25 years, some have been around for 10 years. So they're all at a different life, lifespan. Within each one of those communities, they have their own CCTV, CCTV camera network attached to their perimeter fencing with other layers of security. Are you saying that um, if as long as the security platform or the technology or the camera itself has the capacity to comply, would Vimecam then include all of that existing infrastructure or will each estate now need to go and update and change their camera infrastructure to be able to join the Vimecam network? That is a great places. question. So in the private space, we're not in a rip and replace business at all. We don't sell cameras. It's not our business. We're not installers. Um, even in our public space, we own that infrastructure. We sell a service. So we were, we were a little, we were a bolt on, we we're a plug and play as opposed to a rip and replace. So each one of those estates can on their own bolt or connect into our platform. They can do a mix of their own personal control room and an offsite control room at the same time. And what, what's important to understand, not only can we take their current infrastructure, which has to be working, obviously a non-working piece of infrastructure, there's little, very little we can do with. And we're as good as the lens of the camera and how good the infrastructure is. 
but we can we take all of that and put that into our platform. What else is important, which is very critical part of your first question, it's made up of 13 estates. All those estates have roads and public space between them as well. So not only do we take their estate and put it into a connected ecosystem, so to that all the public space around each of them gets pulled into the same ecosystem. And they do not have to all go to the same control room. They can each almost have their own control room, even with separate companies and still have shared intelligence, or they can take it all to a single control room on site or off site with a shared intelligence at the same time. And just one last thing of that is not, everyone has this view of cameras as security. It's a security tool. A camera is a view. That same view can see a, a burst pipe. That same view can see loitering. That same view can see whatever you wanted to see. So you're taking any form of unusual alert and taking the pinning of the alert you want, putting it into a control room and the controller then decides, do I ignore it? Do I deal with it? Do I send response? Do I send whatever it might be? So the cameras are view into a place and taking it from there. Sorry, just one more question. Having, I'm sure over since uh, Vim McCam has had the private spaces network working, I'm sure that your view has filmed or captured a number of crime crimes. Has that footage been used in any cases? And is that is that footage um, been compliant with with any cases that are ongoing? So the reality is still quite new in this. And again, a case in our country takes a lot more than weeks and months at the moment. So we have built into our system on built into the actual server structure we have evidence lockers which has all the legal necessities for footage to be used which is why a lot of people often come to say i want to see the footage i was in our rule is no we do not hand out footage first of all there's a poppy discussion but more at the same time if footage goes viral and you start picking it up on all the different platforms it can't be used in criminal cases either so we have a full evidence locker built into our system which is to allow footage to be used within criminal cases and it's still early for a lot of those footages we've got a lot and a lot being used i'm person i could be wrong i'm not i'm personally not aware of actual full convictions that have taken place against it our, our the system roll a little bit slower than our footage gets captured <laughs> okay so yeah so it does it just as a proactive and it were preventative measure as well um and i think i'm very glad you mentioned the the poppy compliancy i mean that's a lot of data that's being captured if a system like this is up and working and i'm sure dave has also had to look at this with the poppy compliancy coming in um about april if i'm if i'm not mistaken i think everybody's furiously sharpening their pencils as we speak and um so so with poppy compliance risk data and everything that we're talking about i'm very glad that we here today with um Rian, Rian, uh, I can see he's a little bit off camera there. Um, Rian, are you with us? Uh, <laughs> Rian's having a chat. Um, so, so Rian's business, and I'm going to introduce it for him, is they look at risk assessment. They look at risk assessment and they look at, um, you know, personal protection of personal information. Um, and and setting up a system that that is um, robust. Rian, are you with us? Are you here? Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank thanks. you very much for, for Rian, the I'm... previous gentleman and, and things. That is exactly what we also uh, promoted and things. But let us keep it short because there's not a lot of, uh, of, of slides on our type of business. We started in 1995 as a company doing, and, and I think all the gentlemen around the table and on, on the and the group will recognize you were debugging TSEM uh, sweeping, but we, we did both it out in those 25 years to a very extreme, big and huge business to protect the client's intellectual property. We, we normally sweep the offices, the exco offices, and, and we deal with the CEOs, CFOs. Uh, I'm also a member there at the South African Israel Chamber of Commerce. I'm friends with uh, just for Aiton's purposes, also with Martin Telovich. And things we, we're doing well business in this last uh, 25 years. But yeah, we're also using the Celebrate product for the mobile devices. 
we by Sanders running the cyber forensic all part to, to do the uh, protection of the intellectual property and yeah everything is on our website that we can have I'd love to have meetings with the various gentlemen around the table if we can say like that now and things but as it went we as former yeah military law enforcement intelligence gentlemen we said there's a hell of a need in South Africa for for risk management proper risk manager not uh, writing 800 pages but see what is the exact problems and then also to communicate with the different uh, role players contractors to to assist to be prevented because like they said this morning there's so much money spent on technical solutions but our weakest point is the person the human being we had to take command and control again and that's why what i like what aiton was saying is we had a, a huge client in in centers the other day and they got all these gimmicks in place but they don't use people like aiton and and then we go back to them and say listen guys let us start let us we must think out of the box and, and unfortunately the security environment is some of them are still in their baby shoes and, and things because we we've been asked by by homeowners associations state agents uh, state managers uh, and, and and even cfo of corporate environment to say come and do a risk assessment at my on my estate and tell me what is wrong here some of them work 200 percent but some of them you come back to the human being there's no command to control unfortunately i must say it, a lot of ex-cops military law enforcement everybody is a the expert nowadays i don't believe in experts we say do your bloody job and things and i'd love to sit with some of the people and say this is what we're doing we've got powerpoints to educate the people we're not fighting people we want to say the solution is in the private sector's hand to to keep your area safe and i love what aiton is saying is you can even identify when when i'm staying here in the northern parts of victoria and i can see now that uh, yeah, everybody's building up to the election next year and, and, and all that. But yeah, people are staying under bushes, people are staying in water pipes. And that is our duty to the product that Aitanel is producing to say, guys, do something about it. I don't want to play political games, I'm apolitical, but do something to be preventative and, and all that. So we, we came up also with a new solution a few years back after the risk assessment. We like an intelligence care manager. We must oversee this whole program for the client or the estate or the owner's association. You say, we've got all these things now in place, but who's going to communicate with the with the, the guys at the at Aiton's office? Who's going to communicate with the guys at the police? And you, you need to oversee anybody. I mean, a simple, simple example. I, I, I did some work the other day at my own residence, like painting work. You had to oversee the guys painting. You had to look good after them. You had to treat them with dignity. Because people don't come from Soweto and come and break into my house because it's a human being problem and, and things. People don't manage people, other people anymore. There's no, the guy get the contract to paint the house, but there's no command to control. So after that, I say to him, say, guys, sit, sit with me. You can be the best contractors, but you can penetrate this estate now by eight guys tonight, six guys is leaving. Tomorrow there's eight guys on the truck again. And, and the next night it's the same thing. So it's all about communicating and the human being in command and control. So yeah, we 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 want to help other people. And I think there's enough people around the table that that if we meet one on one, we will explain better. I, I did a hell of a, a risk assessment, me and my colleagues at the a waterfall. Yeah. And three years later, the same problem still exists. At the same because there is no command to control at the security of all due respect. And then I must say there are some of the estates run by corporate big, big security companies that is so, so efficient. I must always say it's like a small town somewhere in the Karua. There is no criminal coming in. He can't move. He can't use another number plate. He can't try to penetrate the, 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 the estate because the stuff that Aiton is talking about is in place. And that's what we want to see. We want to help other people to be preventative because to fight with law enforcement will bring us nowhere. We had to look after ourselves. From that, like Aiton said, from the guy uh, cleaning the, the, the rubbish bins 
and things. Even that, we got a lot of them in Pretoria. I don't know you people in Santa, I think one of the ladies came up with a hell of a good plan. He says, we call them the little trolleys uh, on Tuesday when they empty your dustbins. I will say, let's get sponsors. Let us get that guy's proper bags. We're not going to get them away out of the suburbs. Make, make them your sources. Make them your eyes and ears. But treat them with dignity. Let them be... Even over the cover time, I went out and I gave them gloves and sanitizer and masks and said, guys, please wash, do this. And suddenly there's, there's, a, there's another attitude in my, in, in my specific street. So it's a lot of education still and things. Yeah, it's a lot I'm talking about now. But yeah, that's what we are doing. Everything is on our website. We're a new company coming to the group. But I would love to sit with some of the gentlemen that I see the names on your list. And yeah, I'll bat the balls as it come. You can ask questions and things. Uh, uh, we, I always say it, it's like the COVID thing. There's no manual being worked out for this. Uh, let us bat the balls as it get to us. Thanks again. Thank you very much, Rian. Um, I, just to just to sort of ask just a question though. Um, you know, a risk. Uh, assuming a risk assessment for each environment is somewhat different although there are as an estate there are primary their primary drivers you know you've got your entrance and your exits and your certain amount of traffic and vehicles etc but do you find that within each community there are they're exposed to different types of risks and where do you gauge the risk around data so the infiltration of data, if we are collecting data from vehicles, from people, from IDs, from all over the different sources, um, how are you viewing risk management when it comes to data? You see, the, the, let us go back to a company now. When we do a debugging with our equipment, and you can, like I said, you can see on the website what we're using. After that, and nothing being founded, we... we uh, put in a, a little assessment report for the client. And then we say 90% of the corporate people's IT is in the hands of an outsourced gentleman. Now, my biggest uh, problem in the market, especially on IT, is that guy got no loyalty, except when you polygraph him and you vet and you screen him legally to your legal division, all that type of things and, and that. So, the, there's a difference between an IT manager and a cyber forensic uh, manager. So then we, uh, the other company will, will talk to the CEO of the CEO, CFO or the forensic uh, uh, division or the legal division and say, let's do an ethical uh, hacking legally, penetration testing, and see what is your vulnerabilities and then close it down. We're working with a big, big uh, corporate client now in Rosebank and they took them six months to understand that and said guys your door is as open as a farm in the Karua. The IT guy got a tick box and he said everything is in place tick box tick box tick box but let us check it from outside. So that's another another avenue for that that I leave for the special uh, specialists but yeah that is one of the biggest concerns like uh, and I think Aitanella will agree with that. I must say they, they might have the best state of the art to protect their, uh, their, their, their IT so that nobody can illegally hack in and destabilize the company from inside. So like I said to somebody in the morning, how will you take out Aitan's cameras? The cooks start moving with shotguns and take it out, do their job and get back. How quickly will the guys respond after the shotgun? when they shoot out the cameras. All that time, we must think on the pavement. We must think what is the basics uh, and, and that. How do you plant a bug in a listening device in the office? We can sweep the office and everything is fine. But then the PA or the or one of the extra members or security member come in, they leave a laptop on, uh, uh, on the recording or a mobile device or plug, use a plug with a SIM card. It's all about managing the problem. Come near your client, start, managing everything. It's not in and out. We're not guys that do the work uh, uh, and, and then come out and get our payment. We want to be part of the solution. We want, uh, and, and that's why I said it's such a, a difficult thing sometimes to explain to people, except, and I can understand, and I, I, I don't know Aiton from a bar of soap, but me and him can talk together. He's, he's talking my language. And I think the other day I listened to Alan also 
that is the type of gentleman they understand it now we must roll out this thing to the clients and say guys use this do this oversee this and and all that hopefully i answered some of your your questions uh yeah. Louis. yes thank you thank you so much Rian. and i and i think um talking exactly about that these um you know, part of what we're doing is is take, it comes down to uh, information and data collection, analyzing that data, understanding the movements, so preempting crime being one side of that. Um, you know, one of the challenges that the residential community face, and I think this is a challenge that Alan and Go City have really stepped up to and answered. And perhaps um, Judy, you can move to the next screen. Is um, is the fact of this integrated data solution. Um, you know, we hear it across many, many, at many, many meetings, uh, when we speak to many, many um, estate management, it's the same issue within an estate because it is built over a period of time and not necessarily a new development, which is rolled out with an understanding of what those client and homeowner needs are going to be and understanding what technology is around. Estates that are 25 or 30 years old, they came out of the ground primarily due to a need for security and they have evolved through the time. Now, with that evolution has come the plugging in of many different um, programs and many different data sources, whether it's the, the guys that are collecting information to gain access to the estate or whether you're booking your or a restaurant meal or something at the gym, or whatever it might be, you as a homeowner, resident or potential investor are sharing a lot of information about yourself at multiple points and this information needs to be integrated and then protected. Um, Alan Carley is from a business called Go City and um, they have come up with a phenomenal solution which plugs in everything that we've been speaking about and would enable a community uh, a system like the Dane Fringe, uh, uh, Dane Fern Association to work really really effectively. Alan can I hand over the controls to you and perhaps you could tell us a little bit about Go City. Yes uh, thank you very much Louise. Um, the title of the talk is uh, Techno Technology Driven Systems Through Integrated Data and what we try to do against the backdrop of the challenges facing organizations today, also with the whole move towards poppy and other security requirements and with the move to cyber security challenges and so forth, we try to present and position our solution in three ways. One, we're trying to see, look, here are the challenges. And if you address the challenges at the same time, here are your opportunities. And in addition to that, how do you create this integrated solution? So if I could ask us to run the, the short uh, uh, video, which is coming next. Go City, living made easy. Your modern city and living space requires a modern solution, one that integrates and centralizes the various technologies that exist in your ecosystem, one that not only encourages collaboration between people and technology, but seamlessly merges them into a single super app. Estate management faces several problems in their day-to-day -day operations, such as poor communication, disparities between platforms, data loss, and app fatigue. Ultimately, they face a chaotic digital environment. This is where Go City comes in, with key features aimed at reclaiming your digital environment, such as notifications, touchless access control, account and levies payment, events, fault logging, prepaid utilities, directory access, user data profiles, bookings, emergency contacts, digital wallet, sales and rentals, and points of interest. Go City offers several packages, so no matter the size of your development, there is a Go City solution to meet your needs. Having partnered with several developments on this journey, Go City brings both leading technology and experience together to help your development reach its potential. And if we go to go to the next slide. So if we look at both the opportunity and the challenge, the first is, is that we know that the world is moving much more into a digital world. We're transforming 
everything from additional perspe perspective. We've created the digital twin for a whole lot of physical assets. And in the states and the cities and the precincts, that, that, is, that same challenge exists. How do we start to leverage all the assets we got, leverage the fact that people have got mobile phones, and how do we create an integrated on-demand kind of environment which leverages all of these people? Also, the world is moving us that way. So when we look at a range of other technologies, if we look at, at uh, the IT out there that, that every man in the street uses, that IT is very, very convenient. When we look at social media, that IT is very, very convenient. And us in our cities, in our precincts, in our businesses are always looking to ways to provide the same level of capability. But as well as we're looking at digital transformation and we've got this payoff line which is go digital to survive it is we need to be data driven to thrive that all these digital assets are predicated on trusted data and if we don't service the data needs in the organizations and in these complicated environments then we find we're limited in our ability to deliver on the digital side of these and in many ways Vumita and Etienne um, uh, demonstrated that for us. If we were able to leverage all the disparate systems or all the disparate security uh, camera capabilities and camera systems and put those into an integrated environment and make sure it operates in a coordinated fashion, the outcome is significantly better than operating in, in, an, isolated, in an isolated way. So just as digital gives us an opportunity, we need to at the same time make sure that the data that we have is in a trusted form. If we could go to the next slide. So from a data challenge, and not only do we have the data challenge for ourselves in our own estates and organizations, but also we are, we are being given by public, public opinion, by the regulators, by governments and others, uh, we've been given a whole set of challenges in how do we look after this data and what is the opportunity for people to use the data that we have collected. So not only have we got the obligation to meet all these regulatory requirements, we also need to start to leverage this data so that we are able to plug it into the digital solutions and other solutions that are, that are out there. And if we look at the challenges, they fall in the areas of, well, how do we collect this data? The data sits in a multi, multiple environments, and many of them are very old, actually. I know when we go to most security systems and we look inside at the system, the system's great. But the data of when per someone was allowed in that estate, some of the people have, have left the estate 10 years ago, and then they still have the capability to get into the estate. In addition, we run these silo systems, which we're trying to integrate. Once we have this data in this integrated platform, how do we manage it? Data has a half-life, so it's aging all the time. How do we make sure that we, we stop the aging of that data, make sure that it's all it has good quality and all the pieces work harmoniously together? Then also, once we have that data in this space and it's sitting there, can we analyze the data to give us the information that we've got? And we saw with the Vumital systems, the an analytics of the data is, is the cornerstone of the opportunity that is offered. But at the same time, we have people who are pursuing this data. Um, the regulator requires us by, by a poppy and other pieces, GDPR and other pieces, to secure that data and make sure how it's being used, how long we keep it for, how long, uh, how long after the person is left are we allowed to keep it, on what circ circumstances can we keep it, and when should we delete it. And in addition to that, we have the, the guys trying to put uh, uh, ransom the data and other data uh, perpetrators that are appearing, and we need to be able to protect ourselves against those. And then finally, we need a governance framework. We need to know how do we keep this in operation going into the future. It's no good us trying to fix the data at, at one particular point and then find out that thereafter the data uh, ages and we haven't addressed the, it going into the future. Of, the, of, of course, the opportunities, if we're obliged, sorry, we go back, if we were obliged to keep the data, then there are a range of opportunities on the front of that. You know, uh, what can we do in terms of good stewardship of the data and, and how it operates in our city or our state? How do we share that with the particular vendors that are coming into environment? 
What do we do when a security company comes into our state and we say, okay, here's our data. Do we sign a data sharing agreement, a, a, a way of processing the data with the guy? Do we sign an agreement which gives quid pro quo? You know, we're sharing our data with you. What you get back, you, you need to share back with us. And a simple question is, who owns the fingerprint in the fingerprint systems? Who, what happens to the data that is collected from all the people that have entered with by way of their, um, their uh, license, uh, license disks and the, their licenses? So these pieces of how we share the data and how we get it back in most of these uh, estates is unregulated. And typically you've signed the contract that exists that is presented to you by the service provider. And I guarantee you that that contract places no obligation of him and places all the obligation on, on you as the state of the city in terms of the data in this environment. Those things are unmanaged in any, in, in, in many ways we help in that kind of environment further to that we've created this concept of a digital key and the digital key in, is the digital representation of the person in this digital world and that allows us to use the digital key for his data and to coordinate his data but at the same time allow him to use that digital key to get through security use the digital key to buy food buy something at the restaurant or get a service that is provided by way of the state of the city the precinct we are able to do that at the same time now that we've got proper data on the people communication is significantly better and if we understand more about the people involved at the same time we can have targeted communications so instead of just blanket broadcasting, we're able to target the communication to the individual and therefore get a much better solution. And at the same time, we have preemptive services that can be delivered. Because we now have an understanding from a data point of view, what is going on in the city, the precinct or the state, we're now able to decide on what next, what's the next best action for that particular person in, the, in this particular situation. And that next best action allows for a much better user experience. And as a result, one finds that the, that the state, city and precinct will be considered in a, in a in, in much higher esteem. If we can go to the next slide. Of course, the question or the methodology or approach, what is the approach? How do we as an, as an estate, how do we get to the state where we have this integrated environment and that the data is secure and we can use this data uh, on, on the basis of that adds value? Well, we start with the first piece. We, we go from a super app through an integrated backend through the data trust and then ongoing go governance. So we have a methodology uh, of how to achieve this. And at the same time, not only does the methodology is it, but we have specific tools and solutions that fit into the different environments. And if you go to the next one, I'm going to articulate three of those that we think are important. The first is we believe that where you stay gives you a, a, a gives the app or the state or the city or the state gives them an opportunity to place an app on your phone and have some right to the real estate on your phone your phone and and your phone and we all suffer from app, app fatigue but your phone is a is a special real estate and obviously you don't want to pollute it with a whole lot of apps that you don't use but because you stay where you stay is so important to your life you're one of the eight participants in your in your, the ecosystem of your life who have a right to be on your phone and, and therefore, if you have the right to be on the phone and you are the state provider and the person needs, your, needs to come through an app and that app sits on the phone and that app allows him to get into the, into the estate, then you can use that app to provide other services to that person. And as a result, use it to manage the environment. So the first is to deliver a super app. The super app and the reason why it's not, it's not only an app, but a super app, it, in, a, in an app context, it will do certain things. But it's also designed to be open architected so that it is able to leverage pre-existing solutions that you have inside the estate, whether that is to pay your utilities or to report 
uh, snags inside the state or to, to work with the current security system and access controls that you have. So the app allows you to integrate all of these into one place and then to be able to use that as the single entry point into your state or city. And the benefit you have is that entry point works on a device which people spend a significant amount of money on and the capability that sits in that device is significant. So we're now able to use it, the smart devices in order to drive the, the communication, the security and the capabilities of these, the state or the city. So the first thing is a super app. Next slide, please. The second thing is we, we know that there's a lot of talk about, about us all using apps and, and, and the front end, but the app is only as good as the integrated back end. So the back end to these apps are significant and they don't sit on and run on the front end. They'll run in the back office and the back office application needs to have the ability to do as much integrated capability as possible. And if you can deliver more out of a single app, that's fantastic. Otherwise, it has to provide for some data integration into those systems and therefore an open, open architecture. Those solutions, you know, need to run the and, and can run the financial systems in the environment, how you inter integrate with the people in their state and talk to them via CRM. Typically fault logging, which is a, a very important piece. People are often wanting to see what is the progress. Re come back to me if that I reported that, is, that there's a problem. Payments is an important solution as we move forward. All the commerce or significant amount of commerce is happening both in the, in the, uh, on the mobile devices or in, in the e-commerce in e space. Access control, access control has moved on significantly with IoT devices, much more plug and play in the devices. One now has the ability to use the app and the device as a way of authenticating the person we already do that for our, our banking and our other systems. So we might as well use the, 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 the app to authenticate the person. And therefore we got already this authentication device sitting in the person's hands, and then we can leverage that into a whole access control system. Further to that, where access control in the past used to be a perimeter problem, how do we people prevent people from getting in? We're now able to use it to control people or to help people through zones, to route people along where they should be going with uh, directions, to alert their, their hosts that they're on their way, to allow them to meet each other. A whole range of opportunities exist in that. And therefore there's much more in the way of access controls that we have. And then finally, communication, which most estates do suffer from, they have not only the, the challenge of communicating, but they also, everyone has the problem of all the WhatsApp groups, Facebooks and other uh, social media activity, which in many ways are unmoderated or unregulated. And as a result, one is always trying to, how do I carve those people into a communication strategy and how do we leverage them? So this integrated backend is an important piece. We specialize in this as well. Um, we've been in, in, in IT for uh, almost 30 years now, and uh, we have a number of systems in, in those backend environments. And then we will leverage those for the different sizes of these states and the level of integration and sophistication that we need. Could we go to the next slide, please? Then we have the last piece, which is the concept of a data trust. Now, the data trust is different to what most corporate organizations may have in the form of a data lake or data warehouse or analytical platforms. The data trust says that we have the ability to collect the data of the residents, of the, the citizens in the city. We have the ability to collect that data. But because we are so-called the higher, higher authority, we are the state management or we are the city management, there's also an obligation for us to manage this data and to share it on a trusted basis and to make sure that the data participants that are getting access to this data are doing it in an appropriate way. And as a result, there's two benefits in this area is that one, we're starting to create this integrated data environment, which I talked to earlier, which was the, uh, I guess, the predecessor of highly integrated in uh, a solution, something like Vumatel. So we have the ability to create that. 
but at the same time we need to use that in an effective and in an appropriate fashion. So what do we do in this area? We help organizations with this trusted data platform and creating of the data trust. So what it is talks about is the, the data processing and the data sharing agreements and what do those look like and who do you talk to and who and how do you get those active inside the environment? What does the technology for the data warehouse? Is it delivered on a managed service basis, which what you said would, would, would prefer, and it's, it's in the cloud and one can leverage that and it's secured by the significant cloud vendors, but we provide the access and then analytical capability of it in an easy way. Of course, the security standards are there. And when we talk about security standards in the data trust, we set the, the, the association sets the security standard for the people using it. What are the legal requirements and what's the behavior with the data? How long do we keep it? How long do we uh, do? When do we delete it? Uh, how do we use it effectively and who can we share it with? And then at the same time, the pure hardcore stuff, usage and access controls to that data on an ongoing basis. Of course, the data benefits the citizens, because if you know more about the citizen, know more about your city, know more about the activity, then there are a whole range of solutions and benefits that come. Let me give you an example of one. Because we know that someone lives in an estate and works th three kilometers from that estate and he drives three cars of which he only drives one a day. He has three cars, he drives one a day, he's, he's in an upmarket estate and he works close to the estate. The insurance on those cars can be significantly reduced knowing that information by the insurance provider. For starters, don't have to insure all three, effectively could do insure one of the three that I'm driving, I'm only driving three or four Ks a day. If they both secure environments. So the insurance opportunity is significantly better. Now, if you have that information, the state has that information, the city has that information, they can then offer the user or the resident direct value because of more information about what we know about the person. And it's not only about insurance, it may be a hundred different things, how one buys or how one's one spending pattern looks like, how, it's often, how often one getting food delivered and so all those things. In addition to that, we believe that the, that the data these days do, doesn't have to be installed and stored on the estates with their own hardware, with limited security, with systems that will, will age over time. We believe that there is a, a, a significant strategy to put the data in the cloud, for, make it available by way of a managed service, and therefore offer a much more uh, comfortable and coherent solution to, to, the end, to, the, uh, to the end customer. And then finally, we're looking at, well, how do we against all the data is there, what else would you want to analyze? And that comes down to the security piece that, that we so often see, that as we integrate all the data and provide much newer and more innovative uh, um, IT techniques, AI, machine learning, and other capabilities, the an analysis of the data changes over time and we can provide much better solutions. But those tools and techniques are of no value unless the underlying data is there in a trusted and uh, working form. Absolutely. Uh, Alan, let me interject there just because we, we're running out of time a little bit. So I do have, have a couple of questions that, are, that I'd like to ask you. Um, are you on your last, are you on your last <laughs> slide? Okay, yeah. summa summarize it for us. No, well, I, I've, I've said what we needed to say, integrate the data, do an, a, 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 a super app on the front end and make sure that you have a trusted data store. So, um, Al, and I think this is really where my question is coming from. So we're going to, we go back to the Dane Fern Community Association as an example of what is existing. The, a lot of communities have existing platforms in place. So they are, you know, if we spoke to David, David said they've got an emergency response system, they have an app in place, 
Um, but at the same time, he's looking at layering technology. So bringing in a Vuma cam system or layering it as technology is evolving and security needs are evolving and homeowner needs are evolving. The Dayburn Community Association has evolved over the years. So, you know, when I look at the Go City product and our, we talk about integration, is it possible to integrate as long as the system is compliant everything that they have already i have an app in my estate i don't want to have to re-educate my staff my team to use a new pro a new platform get the homeowners to download a new system i mean it's um it's quite a time consuming and costly exercise would that be necessary if they wanted to integrate services so the each of the situations are different, but generally the answer is the following, is that the systems are capable of being integrated for so long as they're not for some real archaic systems, but for the most part, the systems can be, can be integrated. Then it's a balance against cost of integration and how real time you want the data. So the next thing is that we can set up that the two systems uh, uh, integrate all the data. But the next thing is, if there are key systems where you want to have, someone goes through the gate right now, I want to alert the, the user on his, on his app right now. These are two different systems, one security system, and the other one is the, the app we have in the estate. If, if, if we want that to be in real time, then there's a little extra effort to do it. But generally, all the, all the solutions can be integrated. Then your question is, well, do I integrate what I currently have and therefore have less change management and value and, and measure that against the effort versus the cost and the future proof of the technology? Then you can choose which of the systems you may choose to evolve or replace. And you don't have to do this in a big bang. You have the ability to move this thing over time. So yes, you can integrate what you currently have. We just have to look at the desired outcomes to determine which is the best course of action. Thank you, Al. Um, we've, we're down to our last few minutes and I, I, don't, I don't obviously want to keep um, anyone, but I have a quick question for Dave. Um, David, when you were setting up the association, the Dame Fern Association, what were some of the pain points that, um, that you found you know, particularly challenging that you've overcome in that process? from a technology perspective or, or holistic? I would say, I'd say holistically. And I, I, with the idea of yeah. the audience members are community managers that are listening into this conversation and, and property developers. I suppose our biggest challenges and, and the slowest response to all our challenges was, was dealing with municipalities and dealing with those kinds of environments. You know, now that we we're set up and we've, we've got the contact individuals, you know, take City Power, for example, we've now got a WhatsApp group, uh, WhatsApp group with a group of City Power engineers. You know, it's taken us a long time to get these relationships and develop them with the individuals, bring them to the estate, have a, have a lunch with them, meet with them. You know, that's the only way you, you've got to get off your backside and, and you've got to do stuff. You've got to get, do the legwork, interact with the people. You know, and, and that's the only way that you're going to get results for your community. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of other uh, communities have similar issues. You know, your municipal, your, your, your pick it up environments, your, your roads, your, your electricity supply. Get up, go and meet them. You know, they, they're they human just like us. They manage the same environments and have huge, huge challenges that we have similarly in our own estates. Go and meet with them, find out who responds to your area. And that's, that's the only way we've got the interaction. We've got SAPs on board. We, we meet with them, we interact with them, we have lunch with them, we have a cup of coffee with them on a continual basis. And that's the only way. And, and from a community perspective as well, meet with the other managers in the area. Don't be an island. Uh, don't isolate yourself, you know, just as, as estate managers, we've all got almost exactly the same problems. People parking and pets, um, you know, so, that's that's the best advice I can give is just get out there and meet the guys. Just stay. 
Sorry, just staying with you, looking to the future. Um, the Where do you see this association growing? What are some of the aspects that you would like to still tackle? Um, and, and, and because, you know, I, I pulled some Lightstone uh, stats, Lightstone being an organization that captures the data from the deeds office. And you can yeah. absolutely see a year on year growth in the property values and the asset values of not just Danefern, but Danefern Valley, Danefern Ridge, and all mm. of the estates brought is in that area in comparison to a similar area elsewhere in Johannesburg. So, so there's definitely a need in the market for properties. I'm sure that not many properties in Danefern sit open for a, for a long time and the resale is quite quick. Um, but where do you see this association growing and how do you see it um, improving the asset value of what of what you've already achieved? I mean, I'm, I'm glad you brought up question. the point because it was, you know, it was one of the things that when I first joined Dane Fern, the director said to me, one of your goals as one of my goals and one of their goals is to achieve to to increase the value of property in Dane Fern. Now you've got uh, declining uh, markets, you've got COVID, you've got all this kind of stuff, and, and now you've got to increase the property value. So how do you increase it? You know, you, you've got to bring a lot of value, uh, word of mouth of, of where do you want to live, uh, the schools in the area, etc. What 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 are your residents' needs? What are their urgent needs? And obviously, one of the biggest things is, is safety and security, you know, so not just leaving the, you know, inside the, the walls of the, the estate, but as they leave, as you know, a lot of expats now live in Dane Fern, their, their wives have to look after the kids traditionally or the other way around. And, uh, you know, once they leave their estate, where do they go? Are they safe in the shopping centers? Are they safe on the streets? Are they safe when they leave school? And that's what we've tried to do, just create, just clean up that environment, protect that environment. So once they're leaving the estate, they can still go jogging down the road. You saw the footage of the cell phone snatching uh, earlier and that's what you know we're facing in other communities where we don't have these kinds of setups so that for us is the biggest motivating factor is bring in the protection clean up the area your, your first impressions of arriving in an area seeing it's clean seeing that it's well protected seeing that everybody's jogging and enjoying life you know as as you see in all the the adverts um, that's what you're trying to create you're trying to create that in little island but as I said earlier and I know we've moved that out from not just the, the, the Dane Fern and Broadacres Drive areas but out into four as itself you know doing a similar model getting businesses to contribute getting the team in to sweep the roads every day clean you know getting JMPD to move um, individuals along that that shouldn't be there and it's it's just taking that small step and just growing that community bigger and bigger and bigger and I think we're going to face that same challenge across any municipality in the country and it's, it's for us to get involved not just sit back and expect the municipalities to do it because they can't they're, they're, we're all fighting a losing battle it seems so get involved and contribute financially with your time with your efforts and that's the best way to to grow the area and create a desirable place to move into absolutely thank you so much dave and thank you so much on those and that's exactly it you know take 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 the lead be the champion of your area integrate your services protect your data and, and bring in the right risk and a risk assessment and then look at look at where you live and beyond your gates or beyond your walls and your community and i think part of that is also safeguarding the folks that are coming into your community to work on a daily basis it's an important part of what of what i know dane Fern has achieved the association has achieved and from what i also hear you've created job job opportunities and and um and in internet entrepreneurial opportunities as well for local people absolutely yeah so thank you so much to everybody. It's we've hit our 12 o'clock. I'm so impressed. We're right, right on time. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's participated today and attended this. I hope that we've shared some valuable information with you. Thank you to Dave and your team. I know that everything that happens at the Dame Fern Association is a collective effort. And, and that's what makes it success is your, your team that works with you. 
Alan, uh, Rion, um, Aitan, thank you so much today for being with us. And, um, and we look forward to continuing to share your, uh, you know, the opportunities that your products and services represent to the residential community. And um, Alan, I'm very excited to see the integrated, this integrated service. I cannot tell you how many meetings we've attended where this, this topic has come up. So it will be fantastic to see it in action. Thanks to everybody. Um, Julie, if you'd like to pop on that video for us and, uh, and enjoy your day further. And, and David, enjoy the rest of your birthday. Thanks, Louise. Thanks, Thank you everybody. very much.